Okay, I'll do this video quickly and say, yeah, I never had a Scottish breakdown. Never had a breakdown. Um, why do people think that? Uh, because some asshole made up a story um, back in, what, October 2015, and I started getting monitored and surveilled and harassed by people who knew Brett Aikenhead. That's true. I'm walking my dog in, well, Rushcoast Bay Park where the coffee shop is. There's another example, prime example of it. Um, well, he has to go and have coffee every day is for exposure. It's part of my um, recovery from when I was mugged after work. So I'm, I was mugged and robbed in November 30, 2007. And it, it's been beneficial to always be around in public areas, around strangers and so forth. It stops any issues, basically. So I used to always go out by myself with my dog and go and sit in the coffee shop for hours to have exposure. So... Police should have arrested Brett Aikenhead for that. They did arrest him for assaulting me, but they didn't follow that up. So next minute, I'm there going to the coffee shop I'd normally visit every single day um, and sit, to sit there, part of it, you know, um, recovery. So this is where workers' comp needs to be reopened. So I'm sitting there next minute, I get harassed by Spencer, some Aboriginal guy and his sister who knows Brett Aikenhead. Then I'm walking my dog around Rushcutters Bay Park, Reg Overside in 2016, I get harassed by Peter Fry. Okay, um, I get accused of being suicidal in, uh, was around uh, December 19 in 2015. No, it wasn't. It was misinterpreted. Um, and I've already explained that. I'm not going to explain it again. Uh, seriously, I've already explained how you've misinterpreted the situation. I've already explained the situation. So you, but you've got it wrong. You have it wrong. Because I used to hang out here all my life for this spot here that's very um, therapeutic, very meditation for me, um, and these assholes are deliberately causing trouble in my life knowing that I've, you know, I had an injury and they're trying to make me look like a character I'm not. And you should be arresting these people for it. I was mugged and robbed on my way home from work November 30th, 2007 in Glasgow Coma Scale 13. I do have a disability and what police did was not arrest the right people and continue to follow through with it. I've been stalked and harassed continuously since 2015 and they've been told consistently you need to press criminal charges i don't need a carer don't need looking after don't need home care don't need any of this bullshit okay but what you need to do as law enforcement officers is to go to those people groups and organizations and press criminal charges you were told this in 2016 even when i asked for a cease and desist order that is your job to protect me because i am the victim and don't you dare make it twist around and go oh, playing the victim no I was mugged and robbed November 30th, 2007. Had injuries from that that I had to work with to maintain. Kept living my life. Went back to studies at TAFE College. Went back to doing work on the side as well, um, which I did for Steve Hatch, Dimitri at Chili Pip. Then I end up having other injuries happen, um, health conditions in 2010. Worked through that and so forth. Don't you fucking dare the last nine years I've had a gutful. How many times do I have to call police and say, nobody comes into my area? related to me uninvited. That has been something that has been on all of my medical documents since I was mugged and robbed 2007. That is right there in every medical document. No one comes in my area of residence because even George Jacobs had done that living home environment is extremely important for someone after that injury. Living home environment is extremely important for recovery for someone with that injury and police haven't done their job and arrested the people. You let people come into my area in 2017. You're told by me, don't. It's undoing all the recovery I've made since 2007. It's there on documents. It was there on documents going way right back since 2007 to date where even George Jacobs and... Um, uh, Agnes Ravenport, other doctors, um, uh, what's his name, Malcolm Bowman, Dr. Malcolm Bowman, who was the first one to deal with this as well, um, all had the living home environment is extremely important for myself with recovery. You just undid all the recovery I've made since 2007. So don't you dare. Your job is to go after these people and oppress charges. And I've already told you, nobody, nobody comes in my area of residence with the intent to pry um, privacy invasion or anything like this, nobody comes in uninvited by myself. Like if I'm invited, it doesn't mean they can hang around again like Mark Hanna was doing in 2017. No, 
I invited you over for coffee, that's it. You leave, you leave. You don't come back into my area uninvited again. This is actually right there on every single document since November 30th, 2007, how important living home environment is because of the injuries I've sustained. And police did not do their job when I've turned around to them and said, and I don't care if I've known someone from the past. Oh, I met how many people in my early fucking 20s going out all the time. Doesn't mean they know me. So that you don't just allow them to know where I live and come into my area of residence. I've had an injury. You don't just do that. I live my life. If I ever need anything, I'm big enough and freaking loud enough to say, oh, I need this. But I have my, my medical team. I have things in place. You know, I don't need people and I don't need all oh, support. I was to talk about what do I want to talk about? Talk about fucking what? There was no fucking trauma related to being mugged after work. Whoever made that show, there was no trauma. But like these bullshit are now playing trauma. It's another money making thing. It's like, well, there's no trauma. Where's the trauma affiliated to Alden Star Casino? It's like, well, there's no trauma affiliated to Star Casino. So what do you keep making up as trauma for the other stuck? Is it, and again, this was a big thing I kept saying when rubbish kept coming back to me. I said, well, why do you believe I have trauma to Star Casino? Because you were mugged after work and the way you were treated. I'm like, but I wasn't treated that way from Star Casino. I was treated that way through the um, insurance company. So the then trauma is towards the insurance company, not to my employer. The trauma is towards the legal system, the unjust legal system, not towards my employer. And I've been saying this. It's like, well, well, what worries do I have about my employer? Oh, I'm, I'm afraid. Oh, he's afraid to go back to his employment. Who made that shit up? Because I'm not. I go back to my employment all the time now because I find it relaxing. Seriously, if I have a rough day, I actually go and jump on the tram from Central, go to Star Casino and go and relax and have a coffee because it's just like, oh God, it was like this when I worked. I used to walk in and feel so relaxed I'm at work. That's what I've done. I still do it now because the shit with my fuckwit cunt mother's family, I can tell you, I used to enjoy walking into work and shutting off and going, I'm here for 10 hours. I don't have to worry about the bullshit that's outside work. You know, when most people leave work and they go, oh, I'm leaving work behind. I come into work and say, I'm leaving my fucking cunt family behind. I can't stand them. Yeah. I fucking can't stand my fucking cunt mother and her cunt sisters. And I fucking can't stand them. And I never have. And I wish to God I could go back in time to 2002 outside of Concord Hospital when I said to him, man, I can't be around now, Pops. Not here to keep your daughters in line. Because that's exactly what my grandfather always used to say. Reginald George Purdy always said, Lola... Control your daughters and Nan used to turn around and say, Reg, I can't control them as much as I can control the weather. They are feral pieces of shit, toxic, extremely toxic, vindictive, narcissistic, control freak cunts. Absolute fucking cunts of women and their daughters are just the same. Don't you dare fucking put me near the fucking bitches after the last nine years, I can tell you now. And that's the fucking truth. So that's it. You want to keep this shit going for nine years? I want people arrested. If you want to come and meet me for a coffee, if you're a friend, then meet me for a fucking coffee. Hey, I've always been like, oh, what are you doing? Let's meet for a coffee. Oh, what are you doing, Rodney Saab? Like, we used to be friends until 2010. I don't know what happened next. It wasn't doing with me. You know, it's the bitch that got wrong information as well. But it's like, what are you doing? Meet me for a coffee and, um... Circularly clear, I need to be around busy people. I've got to be around um, busy areas. I'm always around busy areas by myself, but, you know, I want to be up in a busy area. So I'm doing, you know, like I'll go catch a train, I'll do, I'll have exposure, I'll be out in a busy environment because it's healthy for me. It's healthy, it's relaxing, it's therapeutic. It's like New York City, I find to be extremely relaxing. I go to New York City and my body wants to sleep for 10 days because it feels so relaxed. I've never felt so relaxed in all my life as I have in the middle of New York City. It's weird. It's like I get to New York and it's like my entire body just... Weirdly, it must be the same feeling people get when they go to Hawaii for a holiday or something like that. I'm thinking, oh, gross. Hawaii? An island? Oh, my God. It's like when people go to Fiji or Bali or something. It's like, are you shitting me? You think that's unwinding? I find that stressful. I can't handle it. I was like, oh, my God, we're, we're locked. We're locked into an island. <laughs> Water locked away. Landlocked, or where it's like, oh Jesus Christ, it's what's to do here? 
where's the city? So I find it extremely relaxing to be in a 24 hour city environment. It's so relaxing that my body just completely untenses, it just it's untense and relaxes. Um, which is why when I try, I can't sleep, I actually listen to a sleep app that's city noises um, and I'll fall straight asleep. So that's my dog, funny enough. If we're having a rough night where we can't sleep, I'll play, there's uh, sleep apps and I've always played the sleep app city noises. Uh, well, it's city noise through a window, so it feels like I'm actually in the city listening to it through a window. Um, and it's so, well, I, I fall asleep straight away as soon as I start playing it. Within a matter of a minute or so, I'm snoring. Like, I press play. Uh, it goes for an hour, and look, I'm snoring my head off before it's finished playing for an hour. Uh, I know that, because as soon as I put it on, I was like, oh, God, and I wake up, and it's playing something else. And I'm like, oh, God, okay, that was a good sleep. So I, I play City Noises to sleep. And it's a, actually is a, a sleep app, City Noises. Um, so yeah, don't don't start shitty. And, oh, but have you always been like this? Because you were like this, weren't you? No, I fucking wasn't. Just because my mother changed her fucking lifestyle around and wants me to be like everyone she lives around doesn't mean I was like those people. Oh, my mother tells people, oh, he loved camping. No, I didn't. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I fucking didn't. Are you shitting me? My mother wants me to love camping. My mother wants me to be this person. There's a difference. There's a difference to who I am, what I was, what I liked, what I loved, compared to what she wants me to be. And that's where information was gathered. It's like, well, that's what just you want me to be. It's not who I am. You're the one that moved from Sydney and changed your lifestyle around. Live with it like your parents did to tell you. Like Nan and Pop used to always tell my mother, oh, you chose that life, Carol, live with it. You're not from that life you're born in. There we go. None. And I've brought this up as well. None. You know, all my children except for Mary Ann was born in Darlinghurst. Carol makes herself out like she's born in the country. I'm, and Nan would turn around and go, I'm born, Nan doesn't know anything about the country. Like she um, moved to the city when she was a little girl. But she was born in Wellington, New South Wales. And even she hates it. She's got no memory of it. But oh, the way your mother carries on. You know, and that's the thing. The way she fucking carries on. She moved from Sydney. She moved around these people with her second husband. She changed her lifestyle completely around. She wants everybody to do exactly what she wants. And that's not going to happen because she's a control, freak, a control freak, toxic, narcissistic person. And I don't have any time for her or my sisters or anyone else for that matter. Because I've just had nine years of my life stolen from me for this bullshit. Okay, when everything was perfect in my life, I had maintained injuries from being mugged and robbed after work, November 30th, 2007. I had two more years of just making sure that everything was fine moving forward so that in 2017, I could ne negotiate my job back at Star Casino. I had studied design, I had done work in design. I started getting some problems with immune deficiency that I was correcting. I got problems with some, you know, lactic acid that's shown up in, oh, not lactic acid, Lactate, lactate or something like that. Uh, something to do with my, their blood, something, a uh, condition in my blood that was causing like really bad pains in my joints um, and like concrete in my muscles and so forth, like feeling. Um, that, that showed up in blood results in the past. So I was fixing that. So there's a few minor things I was fixing and keeping, you know, um, on top of, um, I was in the most amazing time of my life, being a 35 year old man, um, perfect and there was nothing wrong at all i made it clear i've never been depressed i've never been suicidal i don't care what lies we were saying i was starting to put together uncle fred's slides to put together um so i start like i said to people i said well uncle fred was from Bellevue hill which he was and so is nan's cousin which is gary williams so uncle fred's um leo patrick say which is my nan lola's uncle and i'm getting stuff together for his exhibition next minute i'm getting harassed because i mentioned well, yeah, he did live in Bellevue Hill. Well, he did, Bellevue Hill, Lara, you know, similar areas. Um, but, you know, it's like, but he did. He did. <laughs> For fuck's sakes, he did. So what does this got to do with the freaking price of eggs in China? He did. Simple, he fucking did. And when I'm trying to put a photo uh, photography uh, book together regarding my uncle, who I was very close to, and his photo photography work, and I want to base it on stuff to do with the photos he's taking down in Rose Bay... Um, and you're then correcting, like, causing trouble in my life, and I'm there going, what the fuck are you doing, you morons? He fucking did. 
Where is actually some of his work? Um, so Uncle and I had Uncle Fred slides back in 1996 when he gave me a few of his cameras as well because he's a photographer. So we've Uncle Fred slides. I've got family photos in here as well, and I'm trying to put them together for an art exhibition and um, a photography book. The next minute, this shit's going. I'm like, oh, you want to fucking stop? Because I'm putting stuff together for my grand, like I said, I was going to do my own art, art exhibition plus stuff to do with the person that was, you know, prominent in my life, my great uncle, um, his sister, my great uh, great grandmother, my big nan Mary, um, his niece, my grandmother Lola, and here you fuckwits are just keep interfering. Why are you interfering in my fucking life? Why are you causing me nine years of fucking duress and bullshit? And you keep fucking doing it, you cunts. Because you're fucking due for nine fucking years. You haven't left me alone for nine years. I'm like, back in 2016, can you leave me alone? I've just had pneumonia. Like, seriously, can you fucking leave me alone? I've just had pneumonia. I Maybe I didn't sound clear enough. You know, or I'm single and I'm having a brief sexual encounter. But that little prick cunt, Giovanni Consalvo, that was telling people as a carer and getting keys from the real estate agent that walked in on me having sex with a guy. He was my ex-fucking partner and police should be fucking grabbing the cunt by the scruff of the neck, throw him in a fucking jail cell. The prick committed fraud. The prick fucking committed forgery by signing my signature and he fucking assaulted me. And he fucking lied about me since I met the fucking cunt. I don't want to see the bastard ever again. Unless he's fucking in a jail cell and fucking back off to Adelaide where he's from as far as I'm concerned. I've had an absolute gut for you want to start shitting my life and not get any information from me, then you're going to get anger back. You're going to get anger back. So I'm not an angry person, naturally. But when this bullshit continuously goes on from 2015, oh, he dragged Karen Hurley into it with his bullshit as well. I can't stand that bitch. And then he makes up, oh, you don't like it because of your mu- issues with your mother. I'm like, nothing to do with my mother. Karen Hurley is some lowlife slag from Mount Druitt that boasted about running her husband over with a car when we first met her and she got away with it. I'm like, she's abuses men. And all this bullshit, she works in mental health. She's a fucking deadbeat loser that her daughter married uh, Larry Altavilla. Thank God Larry Altavilla had the sense to divorce her daughter and he's remarried with someone probably decent now. Hopefully she's Lebanese who he's married to. But um, yeah, fucking, she's a loser. Well, I never knew her before, Twenty was it 2011... I met Larry Altavilla, um, found out that he ended up knowing some cousins of mine, that's not here or there, because I'm really not close to those cousins, um, and his kids went to the same grammar school as my cousin's kids, I was like, oh, it's not here or there, because I'm not close to those cousins anyway, but, you know, uh, separate, you know, seven degrees of separation, whatever it is, you know, one degree of separation, and then Giovanni, because he's a friggin' from Adelaide, tries to be somebody in Sydney that he's not, which he always does, um, he's trying to suck up Karen Hurley's ass to getting close with Larry Altavilla. I'm like, why? Why? He's just from the Central Coast. Like, why? Before I met the guy, he was r- running around with thongs and billabong, like he used to dress like a Central Coast surfer, like a, like a, he looks like a freaking dickhead. Then we met him, he started changing the way he dressed, trying to dress, every time we saw him, he was dress up to match us well you know I'm like why these are just these people are just brief acquaintances these aren't friends you've got to remind Giovanni that you classify everyone as a friend that you might meet someone down in a, a coffee shop that you're having coffee with you know or you're having coffee and you might have a chat with someone and you've got to keep reminding Giovanni Consalvo that okay you've just met that person they're not a friend like he uses that word friend so I'm like, Jesus Christ, I won't even use it for in for four people. Call them four people friends in my life. You use it so goddamn much. You're like a fucking millennial. Like, he's absolutely like a fucking millennial. Oh, I've got thousands of friends. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Like, seriously. Like, he uses it like it's all the time. Oh, you know, oh, this friend of mine. I'm like, what friend of yours? It's almost like the way my mother does it. Oh, some Rob guy from work that he's just met. Oh, the guy he was screwing around with. Oh, yeah, like he was screwing. The entire time I was with Giovanni, he was off screwing around. Which is what, like, again, I said, I never saw the bastard. Never, ever saw him. So he wasn't a carer, but he used the fact that he could manipulate people, which he can. He's a great con man, that Giovanni can say. I'm the fucking best con man I've ever met in my entire life. He's a fucking con man. 
So he did. He used to tell people I was off work looking after me, but he wasn't. I never saw him. He was off screwing around. So he used to take time off work and go and get fisted. I was standing there in front of a magistrate. I don't care. Giovanni had the chance in 2016 to tell the truth to these people. He used to take time off work, make out that he was a carer, having all his time off work to go and see, spend time with me and look after me, um, except I never saw him. I thought he was at work, but he was off getting fisted with a big telegraph pole in his ass. Smoking crystal meth, getting fisted is what Giovanni Consalvo does. Someone should tell his Mormon mother and father, so Dawn Carpenter and that fuckwit Sebastian up in, um, you know, uh, South Australia, that that's exactly, because I got a phone call from his father once. Why is my son crying? I'm thinking, I haven't seen your son for three days, but I bet you he's out getting his ass fisted, so he's smoking crystal meth, but he's probably coming down. That's what I should have said to his fucking dad, and I can tell you now, I wish I did. I wish I fucking did. Okay, because that's exactly what Giovanni Consalvo fucking deserves after these bullshit lies since I met him. That's what he deserves. People that stand up and show that frigging golden child piece of cunt Mormon with, what is it, Latter-day Saints, Mormon, um, Jehovah's Witness and born again Christian fucking cunt freaks or family members the truth about this wanker and piss the cunt back to South Australia where he comes from.